I had always sort of wanted to do a sequel to Jurassic Park because I thought that both by popular demand and also because I just had such a great time making the first film. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> I, just, I just had to hear that again. <laughs> the idea of being inside a prehistoric world that exists somewhere in this world today, that really compelled me. And I thought, wow, what a great, what a great story. A few weeks ago, a British family on a yacht cruise stumbled across the island. There's an island where there are dinosaurs, a bunch of dinosaurs, no electric fences, running around, no people there. They own the island, it's the lost world. And now it's only a matter of time before this lost world is found and pillaged. Old temptations and the old adrenaline comes up again. I'm not making the same mistakes again. No, you're making, you're making all new ones. And he takes risks again. Hopefully we've kept this island quarantined and contained, but I'm in shock about all this. He says he's going to send some people on land, a few people, to sort of document them. Wow! Isn't it great? Ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and, and screaming. It was really sitting down with Michael Crichton, and Michael wrote, you know, the story in his book, and then David Kep came in and did a wonderful screenplay, and The Lost World is going to be a pretty good story. We won't stay anywhere near these islands. Llaman Las Cinco Muertes. They call the islands Las Cinco Muertes. What does that mean? Five deaths. Steven's got such a, a wonderful, fertile mind, especially for these sorts of adventure sequences. They're so big that they're close to you even when they're 20 feet away, because they've got so much girth and dimension that even when they're yeah. 20 feet away, they're going to look like they're all around you. Okay. You know, and they've all got their tails, kind of like scorpions, and they're all making swipes for the tails. In the first movie, we got over the, the this mountain of disbelief that the audience had to suspend, which was, how did they bring dinosaurs back? So it gives us a little more time to concentrate on some of the characters. My character in this movie, instead of a kind of sound uh, fellow, like I was in the first one, who comes along for the ride with some fun, you know, in him. I have fun in me and a sense of humor. I'll be back in five or six days. No, you'll be back in five or six pieces. But I'm uh, driven in a very passionate way. You know, stay out, don't move! Don't move! He's the only one who's been through this experience before. You know, I beg people to listen to me. I use plain, simple English. I don't have any accent that I'm wearing. Oh, shut up. And against his will, he's dragged back into this situation to save uh, someone's life. She's there to join a team of people who were there to study the dinosaurs. And the reason he goes down is to retrieve her. Why didn't you say something to me? Because I knew you would have stopped me from coming. God, no. Stay there. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah! Shoot him! She's just protecting your baby. So am I. I play Kelly Malcolm, Ian Malcolm, she's his daughter. I'm your daughter all the time, you know. You can't just abandon me whenever opportunity knocks. <sighs> Gee, that hurts my feelings. Did your mom tell you to say that? And she stows away on the trailers without him knowing. Who started a fire? I just wanted to make dinner. She needs to get my attention and to um, obviously come here and, and be with me. Other animals are going to hear this. Can you hear me? Dad, I gotta get out of here, please. I wanna get out of here. I wanna go someplace safe. No, 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 I wanna go someplace else. Well, we go through something very heavy and intense together and uh, that uh, bond us in a very important and primal way. Please, Dad, stay here. The queen, the goddess. Your inspiration. You have a bunch of different characters with strong objectives thrown into a very serious situation. The operation has suffered severe casualties, and the survivors are now in mortal danger. I need you to send rescue immediately. You put together one group of hunters and another group of dinosaur advocates. So these two groups come together. It's more than just running from dinosaurs. There's a lot of human drama in this one. His objective is simply to go on one final expedition against one of the greatest predators that ever lived. Let's get this movable feast underway. Action! They're pushing us over the cliff. Oh my god. Hang on to something! Physically, it was a hard playground. We just did everything. Me and uh, Vince Vaughn and Julianne Moore are trapped in a horrible situations and uh, just fighting for our lives. You guys would start by looking up 
then you would look off to the left, right, like quickly, because this whole thing is moving. And the reason you're looking all over is you don't want to get hit by the side. Okay, that guy's looking up. Here comes the trailer. Oh my God, it stuck your head from the trailer. Look back down. Slowly look up. Okay, now it goes to the ground. Everybody look down on the ground. Explosion. It is truly the most physically demanding film I've ever done. I didn't think when I when I first saw the script that it would be that it would be this challenging physically, and it's been fun. We're hitting you with a lot of air from an air tube. You know, you show up and you think, well, today I'm in a harness, or today I'm really muddy, or today I'm in a waterfall, or whatever, and you do it. And cut. Very nice. Good day, everybody. On this movie, we had uh, so many sets. I mean, it was about a hundred, and so we had tremendous amount of changeovers where we would have we had our eight sound stages in our back lot plus our distant locations when you go on location you have to react to what's there and i enjoy that a lot because that actually helps to dictate the way the movie is going to be and it's you being in touch with something that's bigger than you what the hell is that go as fast as you can oh! Oh, oh, oh. I don't think the, the screenwriter should ever be trying to write to existing technology. You write what you think tells your story in the best or most exciting way and leave it up to them to figure it out. A movie like this needs at least a year to 18 months of prep time. It takes 18 months to build the animals and to prepare a production of this size. You began sketching and designing some of the sequences about two years ago. What is that? <laughs> when people ask me, you know, what's a dinosaur really look like? I tell them to go see the movie. I don't tell them to go to my museum. We're a scientist. We give the information to the artist. The artist puts it together and makes it actually more sensible. We're solving That's right. a hundred million year old mystery. He's got a broken leg. Let's get in the car before they hear us. Are you out of your mind? Shh. Do you have any idea what that is? Come on, open the door. Come on. Baby. You're nuts. Trying to create a story visually that kind of feels realistic, not like the amusement park as in the first one, but more like the Lost World. You recognize this trackway? Yes, I do. Tyrannosaur. We certainly wanted to raise the stakes, you know, where Stan Winston was concerned because he had a chance to make dinosaurs that were even more lifelike, and he really did that. The bird theory that if they, you know how we have breathers and everything, yeah. it would be neat if we could have these guys going. Oh, really fast! Like really fast. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay, ah. Mr. Wizard. There are different dinosaurs in this, and the dinosaurs they have in this, I think will be even a little more sophisticated. I think it'll be something you have to see. The dinosaurs have been fantastic. Stan has done an extraordinary job. I had a scene with a baby stegosaurus. She had a whole personality. She had a whole life. You didn't have to do anything. It's just to play the scene with her. It's important in these movies that the animals never be characterized as villains, because they're not. They're just there doing what they do. Like it's not scared. It's when the humans come in conflict with one another through greed or, or hate that they find themselves sort of at the mercy of the animals. When you're that close to them, you see how massive they are in scope. They come to life when they start to move. Maybe there's a DNA memory clone, kind of a, what would you call it, kind of a psychic DNA. That'd be great. And maybe it recognizes you. It's all a leap of the imagination anyway. When you work with them, you have to keep pinching yourself to say, actually, that's not a real creature. The whole collaboration, Michael Lantieri is the guy involved with special effects on the set, so they're knocking over gas pumps and breaking windows and things, and knocking over cars. To a certain extent, we're creating what's going to happen later. <laughs> It's nice to do the mechanical stuff on the set as much as you can because the actors can work with it. And we kind of know where that shift takes place, where you can't get away with that anymore and you need something else. One of the things we did here at ILM before the plate photography was done was uh, I did a little animatic. We just set up ponds of a uh, herd of paras, herd of galleys, um, and a motorcycle and just uh, set up different paths and how the motorcycle could be chasing these things through the legs of this processor. And when it came down to play photography, Dennis sort of had a, a vision of what that could look like before they shot the film. <laughs> what we're doing now is setting up the shot, 
uh, getting the actors to imagine what's actually there, even though it's not going to be there. They have to know where to look, and then you know, getting the scene to look like they're in the new Jurassic Park Lost World. The process starts with shooting the live action backgrounds on set and taking precise measurements. We'll then reconstruct from scratch what that animal looks like. And then once the model is made, the animator will then be able to animate the character one frame at a time. A lot of actors say when they get the walk down, then they understand the character. Well, it's similar to what we do here because animators are essentially performers. Just when you have that one come in, maybe just one other one too. Would looks, be nice. Looks like a little bit empty. Yeah. But just the way they're gathering and everything is the way they're coming, almost like lamb piranha. I'm afraid there isn't enough to go around. And then once the animator's done with it, the shot will go to the technical director. It's to sort of make it look real. They'll apply a skin to it and they'll combine it with the background. A film like this is basically in the spirit of exploration. It's like a laboratory. There's so many things that are involved in getting a shot that is definitely a group effort, but hopefully the final result looks like the single mind of the animal on the screen. After it's all said and done, we have hopefully got a living, breathing creature looking as though it was really on the set, responding to Steven's direction. It's not the same movie. The new CGI and the improved artistry will make the dinosaurs look even more believable. It seemed like an opportunity to do something that was the next step beyond the first show. Hang on. It's a good adventure. It's a lot of fun. So the chances are that if you were bowled over by Jurassic Park 1, what you're going to see in Lost World will just take your breath away. I think it's more terrifying because these characters are well developed and these characters have points of views and opinions. And we came here to watch, you came to strip mine the place. Back off. At least we came prepared. And so I think you become invested in these characters. Taking dinosaurs off this island is the worst idea in the history of bad ideas. I think it'll be frightening and thrilling and fun. Oh, that's good. Okay, let's shoot. If anybody was looking at this and didn't know we were about to shoot a scene, it would be they would find this to be a pleasant form of masochism. I really think of the audience when I think of the Jurassic Park or a Lost World. And yeah, a lot of this movie was made for what I hope would be a pleasure, an adventure for the audience. Oh my God, people are going to jump right out of their seats because I know that I would. What is it? Mommy's very angry. Okay, we got it. Fabulous. Great, right, we got it. <laughs> British family on a yacht cruise stumbled upon site B. And now it's only a matter of time before this lost world is found and pillaged. Hopefully we've kept this island quarantined and contained, but I'm in shock about all this. That's how it always starts. But then later there's running and then screaming. What the hell was that? Go. As fast as you can. I need you to send rescue immediately. Taking dinosaurs off this island is the worst idea in the history of bad ideas. Let's get this movable beast underway. Don't move! What is it? Mommy's very angry. 